You want to know why you shouldn't have weight loss surgery? Stay tuned and I'll tell you. Hi guys, welcome back to Bariatric Beauty and Finishing School. My name's Kelsey. I am a 10-year gastric bypass post-op who has lost 256 pounds. I am also a 17-year professional makeup artist and I'm an author. So if you want to read my, my little teeny tiny book, it is available on Amazon and it will be linked down below. So let's get started. Why you shouldn't have weight loss surgery. I don't know how to say this without being mean or without being harsh or without coming across like I'm judgmental or whatever it is, but you simply should not have weight loss surgery if you're not ready to commit. And I don't mean to commit to the next two years or the next 18 months or the next week. I mean forever. We are running into so many people now who have had or who want to have weight loss surgery. Doctors are seeing it as lots and lots of money. So they are, in my opinion, they're not doing their due diligence. They're not educating people correctly on the rest of your life. What happens after weight loss surgery? How does it work? How do you lose the weight? Why can't I do this without a surgery? Those kind of things. They also don't talk about how this is a change for the rest of your life. A lot of people go into weight loss surgery thinking they're gonna have a smaller stomach and they can keep their same diet. I'm here to tell you that like that old quote, do the same thing and expect different results is the epitome of ridiculousness, right? That's probably not how the quote goes, but it's true. If you don't make any changes, nothing's gonna change. You will lose weight initially, absolutely. The honeymoon period is gonna take care of that for you. But once that's over, you're on your own. And what are you gonna do with it? If you haven't changed your mind, if you haven't made the commitment in your mind to actually change your eating habits, change your lifestyle, you're gonna have a regain. And whether or not it's a total regain or not, it comes with its own myriad of health problems. Yo-yo dieting is extremely dangerous and having weight loss surgery and then having a total regain, the King Kong of, of that. You wanna really, really make sure that your head is, it doesn't just go with eating, it goes with a lot of things. Making sure you get enough water. After weight loss surgery, we are so much more susceptible to dehydration. And I know what you're thinking, well, I drink enough water. I mean, I drank like a bottle of water yesterday. I was hospitalized six times for dehydration and it sucks because you feel literally like you're dying. You start having these cramping, incredible cramping. Then you start having you know, fatigue in your limbs. You start hallucinating, you're dizzy. You feel like you're gonna pass out. You're nauseous, you have headaches. Your skin is starting to flake and fall off. A lot of really scary things happen and that's just from lack of water. Throw in having aspirin or ibuprofen after surgery and burning a hole, literally burning a hole through your stomach. These are serious consequences of real life choices that we make every day. We don't drink enough water. We have a headache or we have a swollen ankle and so we decide to have some ibuprofen and then three months down the road, we have a severe ulcer. I have friends who have literally gone into sepsis and had to be hospitalized for months in intensive care because of an ulcer, because of ibuprofen. These are things you have to consider before you have weight loss or not to mention what it does to your brain. What I mean by that, what do I mean? It doesn't actually change your brain waves, right? No, it doesn't, but it can really mess you up mentally when you have a regain. That feeling of hopelessness that you felt before you had weight loss surgery and that feeling of depression or feeling inadequate or hating your body or any number of negative emotions that you had. If you have a regain after weight loss surgery, it comes back and it comes back worse because you know you had the tool and you had a chance and you messed it up. A lot of people will come in with, well, this happened to me and I have this and I have this, but what it comes down to is you messed it up. No medication forces you to eat a cheeseburger. There is no medical disease you can have that forces you to eat a bag of Cheetos, right? So when we break it down to what actually happened, the actual science behind why we had a regain, all those reasons get thrown out because they're not reasons, they're just excuses, they're things we're hanging on to. And I did it too. And that's what sucks. It's the most embarrassing thing ever to be morbidly obese again after weight loss surgery and having to tell people, 
well, no, I can't eat that because I had weight loss surgery and it'll make me sick. And they look at you like, but you're still fat. Rising above something like that is a whole nother story and a whole nother video. And you can lose your regain, absolutely. But wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to? I can tell you for me personally, being that I did have a almost 100 pound regain and a baby and a divorce and several different medical diagnoses, I'm literally in a cast right now and I can't walk. There are a million things that I could say. I can't walk, so I have to order food. And if I'm gonna order food, I want something that tastes good. And I like fries and I'm depressed because I can't walk and I'm out of work. You see what I mean? It just goes on and on and on and on and on. But if you make the right decisions and you do what you're supposed to do and you follow a plan, and if your team, if you're going into weight loss surgery and your team doesn't have a plan for you, you're with the wrong team or reach out to me and I will help you find a team or help you find a plan, okay? Because it doesn't have to be this me standing on a pedestal pointing my finger down saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, because that doesn't help anybody either. But I wish that I would have had someone to say, hey, I know your doctor says you should be eating all this bread because you're pregnant, but you know you shouldn't. So who do you think you should listen to? A lot of doctors these days are just in it for the money and what sucks is they're doctors so we trust them. We trust that when they say go ahead and eat oatmeal in moderation that they're making an informed choice for us or when the nutritionist said yeah of course wheat toast is fine. What she means is of course one piece of wheat toast once a week is fine. She's not saying one loaf of wheat bread a day is fine and this is the problem is most of these doctors and these nutritionists are naturally thin people meaning their brains are already wired to eat a naturally healthy weight maintaining diet ours aren't for whatever reason we have our brains wired differently and my fat brain likes tortillas pizza and fries and my fat brain is super smart she can have me convinced that I deserve it or that it's not that bad or one bite isn't gonna hurt. So I am constantly playing a tug of war with my fat brain. And I mean, I had weight loss surgery nearly 11 years ago. And for the first five years, I was so strict. I was terrified to go back to 400 pounds. I was terrified of the pain, of the embarrassment, of the way that I had used to feel that I didn't even realize at the time. After losing 256 pounds, I couldn't believe how much less painkillers I needed or how good it felt to just sit in a chair and not worry about it breaking or to be able to go into literally any store and buy clothing or not worry that someone's wondering or looking at me when I eat. You know, as a morbidly obese person, these are things you think about that maybe you don't even actually think about. They're subconscious and you're aware of it. I was terrified when I had weight loss surgery of going back to that. So I was strict. And then I let the fear of, of losing a pregnancy, I let the fear of not being able to be a mom, I let the fear of what does this mean for my future overtake what I actually already knew in my head. And then I made excuses for it and I called them reasons. And for four years, I held on to those. And it took me the last two years um, and finding you know, my mentors and going back to basics for me to really understand what it means to have weight loss surgery and what it means for the rest of my life and what it means to be committed. Am I perfect every day? No, but I don't pat myself on the back when I make a mistake. I realize that I'm making the mistake and I make the conscious choice that the mistake is worth it. And later on when I get on the scale or my clothes are a little bit too tight, I remember that I consciously made that choice. So there's no woe is me, there's no I have tears in my tendons and I can't walk. There's okay I made the choice to eat those homemade tortillas or whatever it was. And these are the consequences. If you're not willing to stand up for your consequences, then you know what the choice is. You know what the answer is to the choice, right? It's like a little kid, we tell them not to lie. You have children, you tell them not to lie. 
and you create these consequences for them if they do. It's the same thing for us when we eat things we shouldn't and we have regain. So instead of you hearing this like me bashing people who eat in moderation or those kind of things, remember, I'm just here to help you. And the four years of my regain and struggling to lose it and doing keto and paleo and Atkins and every diet under the sun, it was miserable. And if I can save one person from having to go through that, then my job is done. If you wanna know more about the 10 years after weight loss surgery, and if it's something that you wanna to commit to for the rest of your life, pick up my book. Because I talk about real life in here. I talk about struggles. I talk about things that I wish I knew before. I talk about the things that I've learned since. If you are a loved one or you're supporting someone who's had weight loss surgery, be patient because this journey is not just about us going through an operation and having a smaller stomach. It's an entire mind, body, and soul transformation. And that's deep. And that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in the first week. It probably doesn't even happen in the first year, but it happens. And the more support and love and tough love that you can give someone going through weight loss surgery or to yourself, the more successful you're gonna be. And you know what? If I can do it, anyone can do it. And I'm not saying that because I am this miraculous, like amazing, super self-confident person. I'm saying it because it's true. It's hard and it sucks and I'm lazy sometimes and I screw up, but the end game and the end goal is to be healthy and live a healthier, happier life. And if that means that I need to take back control of my diet and I need to be committed for the rest of my life to vitamins, to water, to protein shakes, to all those kind of things because I want a better life, what better motivation is that? Thank you for joining me, you guys, again with Bariatric Beauty and Finishing School. I'm sorry for this little rant, but I have been in a lot of social media bubbles lately with people struggling and the struggle sucks. So if you would like to hit subscribe, I do have some beauty videos coming up. I have some great tips. I have the top 10 things I wish someone had told me before weight loss surgery coming up for you guys. And as always, be kind to each other and I'll see you again next time.